Hello again, I'm Blunty and I'm in a mood so good it would blister the very pimples of God's own ass because I'm doing one of my favourite things it is I get to do sometimes when I flip on the camera and that is a gadget review and today's gadget review is the Samsung ST1000 point and shoot little happy snapper. Now, what makes this thing so special? Well, it's not especially particularly awesomely special. It ha does everything you expect a little happy snapper to do. It does have a few extra bells and whistles to make your life easier. And it's got Wi-Fi built in. And that's starting to become more and more common on cameras. It's got Bluetooth built in. Again, coming more and more common. GPS built in. So you can geotag your photos, which means you can... It records where and when and how you took your photo. Now to be perfectly honest with you guys, at first I thought having Bluetooth on a camera seems a little bit redundant because Bluetooth is a short range wireless technology so you can beam your pictures directly to your computer and I'm thinking why would you do that when it's faster and easier just to jam the USB cable in there and psh, dump the photos all the way across. And the trick to that is, sometimes you just forget your USB cable, especially when you're traveling. Maybe you've gone out for the day, you've got your net top with you, you've got your camera with you in a little satchel bag. You don't drag along all your cables and power supplies and all that sort of stuff. You're just out and about. You fill up your memory card. What are you going to do? You're going to go out and buy another memory card? No, you can just psh, Bluetooth your photos, boom, 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 straight across to your net top, and away you go again, shooting again. So it can be handy. Wi-Fi, on the other hand, is even better, especially... For those of you who are, uh, are at an event or, or something, maybe you're a blogger, you can, instead of, you know, pulling out the memory card or Bluetooth and across and putting the photos on your laptop and then hooking into a Wi-Fi thing and uploading them to your blog or your news service or whatever it is, wherever you're sending them or to a friend or family or whatever, you can Wi-Fi your photos directly from this thing. It will hook in to any open Wi-Fi access point. You can hijack someone's Wi-Fi and send your photos direct to the web. It's got all the new fancy features like blink detection, smile detection, a bunch of automatic modes to make taking your pictures as easy as humanly possible because that's who this camera is aimed at. It's not aimed at people who love to dig in right in to the, to the deep recesses of the menu and fiddle with every little thing to get your photo absolutely artistically perfect. Now this thing is just designed to pick up, point at something, snap it, psh, upload it to the web, or take it home and fiddle with it on your computer all that sort of stuff and that's what it does best. The other thing about this camera is, I'll swing it around here, see that? An absolute lack of any buttons or dials or little joysticks or fiddly tiny little prick buttons that if you've got giant man hands like me can be a little awkward at times. The screen on the back here is a, let's do this so you can see me as I'm talking to a little thingy, the word, I'm, there's a word to describe what I'm doing and I forget it. Anyway, but the screen there is, is a touch screen and it's one of those nice capacity touch screens so you can just jab at it with your big fat fingers and it's going to do what you want. And the thing that I really like about this, the touch screen is fine for when you're controlling your bits and bobs and pieces and going through the menus if you want to tweak something. But when you're reviewing your photos in playback mode is when the touch screen becomes really, really fun and handy because you can sort of do this little thing and change the way it's rotated. The camera has a motion sensor in it so it automatically knows which way the camera is pointing so you don't have to manually rotate your photos once you get them on your computer or, or upload them. It automatically knows whether it's portrait or landscape which is always a beautifully handy thing to have in a camera. The other really nice thing about having a touch screen on the back of the camera is managing your files on the camera becomes a little bit easier. One of the most painful things I ever do on a little camera like this is, you know, you cycle through your pictures in playback mode, you find the menu button, then you go to scroll down to delete, and then you hit delete, and then it asks you to confirm, and then you... It's like five different like, little joystick and button presses just to delete a picture. If you want to delete a picture here, all you really have to do, and I'll delete at that one, all you have to do, check this out. No, I don't want that one. A little cross through it, and it goes, delete file, and you go, yeah. It's intuitive, it's easy, it's simple. Even grandma's going to be able to figure this one out. Don't want that photo, you look like a turd. You're limited to a five times optical zoom. And when I say limited, five times is good enough for everything you're going to be doing with a camera like this, because once you zoom any further than that, you're going to get massive camera shake anyway. There is a digital zoom on top of that, but I've said this before in other camera reviews, anyone who actually uses a digital zoom deserves to be beaten about the head to neck with their own camera because digital zoom always looks awful. You're better off taking it at maximum optical zoom, and if you want to get in closer, go into your computer, Photoshop, whatever, crop out the bits you want, then you can tool with it and tune it up and use bi uh, biometric... 
Don't use digital zoom is basically what I'm saying here, ever. The other thing that is particularly relevant to guys like me and every single person watching here because this is YouTube and we're all about video, right? This takes 720p, 30 frames per second, high def video. It's beautiful. The microphone in it is one of those tiny little pinhole microphones. You can't expect too much from it. It does the job fine. It doesn't sound particularly hissy or tinny or anything like that. It's perfectly acceptable. I mean, if you're going to be seriously recording audio for a you know, big video anyway, you're going to be using a proper microphone. So any video you take with a 720p, wonderful. YouTube, of course, supports that now and has done for some time. So it looks beautifully and clear and all that sort of stuff. And it does it at 30 frames per second. And there aren't too many cameras on the market of this size that will do 720p and do it decently at a decent frame rate with, with the ability to use the optical zoom, by the way. A lot of cameras I've used that have video recording, whether it be high def or not, stop you using the optical zoom when you're in video mode. And I've never known why that is. It's probably got something to do with the way the autofocus works or something. I don't know, but it's always annoyed me because you need to use your zoom in video sometimes. You really do. This lets you do it and I love it for that. I would lick it for that except for the fact this is a borrowed review unit and I don't know whose tongue has been on this before mine. <laughs> The other nice thing about the video that this does that a lot of other cameras have problems with, a lot of you know little handheld cameras, whether they be the dedicated little flip type video cameras or shooting the point and shoots like this that have the built-in video functionality is when you're moving and panning and stuff like that, they have a tendency to tear. And if you don't know what video tearing means, you know what it looks like because you know how the picture kind of shimmers when you pan horizontally or even vertically sometimes and you know you get that weird sort of wobbly goobly goop crap happening as far as I can tell and I've, I've given this a fair workout it doesn't suffer from that when you want to take a video there's not a separate little shutter button for it like there is on same camera it's not a little menu option away what you have to do is you hold down um, a little icon on the uh, right hand side of your screen so just where your thumb would normally rest when you're when you're holding a camera anyway and you tilt it that's it you hold the thing down and you tilt it which is lovely and easy and straightforward. However, the reason I don't like it, the reason I would want a separate dedicated button or a switch even, just you know, click, boom, is because that process, you hold the button down, you do it, and it changes modes, that's slow. I could miss something if I want to go into video mode real quick, but boom, boom, I might have missed something. If I had a separate button, I could do, oh, look at that, boom and it's done. So down to button basics, this is a really nice camera. It takes fairly decent pictures, although I have noticed it does have a bit of a problem with saturation sometimes. So if you're taking a picture of something with a mottled, uh, cloudy, blue sky kind of background, those clouds are going to lose any and all detail more often than not, which can be in the pain in the ass. But then again, you got to think about who is the target market for this camera. Are they going to care if you're trying to take an artistic vista of a city skyline with clouds and stuff? You might not be using one of these little point and shoot cameras. These are for travellers. These are for people at parties. These are for going to pubs. These are for friends out and about in the park. These are for those day-to-day -day events, not the deeply wannabe artistic types who uh, think they're a decent photographer, but then they take 40,000 shots and get back 12 that they actually like. All right, so let's boil it all the way down here. Do I recommend this camera? Yes, easily, without a skip in my heart for several reasons. The first reason is the pictures it takes are at least as good as its competition. I mean, it's not a digital SLR, of course, but, you know, if you want a digital SLR, you buy a digital SLR. This is something nice and easy to take up and pick it with you and take everywhere and just have it do its job and have it do it with an absolute minimum of fuss, minimum of screwing around with options and menus and settings and all that sort of stuff. You just turn it on, point it at something, press the button, bingo, bango, your pitch is done. So friggin' easy. It's got the Wi-Fi built in, which I love, and it's going to be massively handy, particularly if you're, you're a blogger or something, you're out covering a live event. Like, I expect some of these things to be in hands of people working for the big blogs at, at things like Macworld coming up in January and stuff like that, because you can snap a picture of old Steve Jobs up on the stage here announcing the newest Miracle product, and boom, you can send it direct to his blog without having to take out memory card, stick it in his mate's laptop, and upload it to the blog and all that sort of stuff. You can do it straight away, boom, instantly through this thing, which is... Nice. The movie mode, which as I was telling you before, I'm particularly impressed with. Full 720p, 30 frames per second. It looks terrific. There's no tearing on any of that kind of bull crap that I've experienced with lots of other cameras of this type. And video mode is very important for guys like you and me, YouTubers. And the final reason is 
to be frank, it's a Samsung, and I love Samsung equipment. I've owned Samsung's uh, home theatre gear, TVs and, and surround sound stuff. This uh, monitor right here, the USB monitor, is, is a Samsung. The camera is obviously a Samsung. And I have never, ever, ever had a problem or an issue or needed to make a warranty claim or couldn't figure out how something worked or you know even needed to read the manual on any of my Samsung gear. I like them, I trust them, I enjoy their stuff. And I have faith in their ability to make good gear that lasts, does what it's supposed to do, does it with an absolute minimum fuss. I like it. Thanks for watching. I'm Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.